I for one am a huge fan of Hamilton. I was wondering what drew you to the musical Hamilton? Well, last year my daughter was a sophomore in high school and Dr. Elkater in the math department, his son was a senior in high school and they had this AP European history class together and they became good friends. And I think it was Omar Elkater, I think it was Dr. Elkater's son mm -hmm. who introduced her to Hamilton. So those two would geek out and he can sing every single rap like just as fast. So and she can now too, but only because she was doggedly determined to match his wits kind of. <laughs> so it was, um, it, they be, they're a lot of like personality wise. So she became obsessed with it, sort of obsessed with beating Omar at his own game. So she would play it relentlessly. And it seemed like we never got past the first act. But then I, I started to really like the music too. And I've never really enjoyed a musical before I saw it. Mm -hmm. Like it's always been, I saw the musical and then I bought the soundtrack. This is really the first one where it's like, I learned the soundtrack and now eventually I get to see the musical. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. But then last spring, I just started walking, you know, like four miles every day. And so I would put my headphones on and I'd turn on Hamilton. And when you're listening to it all by yourself with your headphones, that's when you can really start to hear the stories evolve. Mm -hmm. And that's when I became obsessed was last, last spring probably. I was listening to it almost mm -hmm. every day. And then when I started running to Hamilton, I thought that was really strange. But <laughs> there, <laughs> there are certain songs yeah, <laughs> that make you want to run. And so then I just started exploring Lin-Manuel Miranda because I think he's really brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in, it's ingenious to write a rap musical on a historical character. He apparently went to the White House and performed. I don't remember what song it was. It was one of the first ones. It may even be it the is title the first track. one, the title track, yeah. And he Eight did it years in front ago. of the Obamas, and they they were like, this was. They thought it was crazy, and yeah. then now there's the musical, and they love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. They thought he was nuts. Like, who writes a rap about Alexander Hamilton? Who thinks Hamilton embodies hip hop? Yeah, <laughs> well, and then I thought that was so cool because then the more you read about it, the more you realize Jefferson, he doesn't rap. It's more like this sultry jazz. Mm -hmm. And so each character has his own, or uh, the main characters have their own sound to them. Yeah. It's not all rap. And so I, it made me appreciate it even more. And then there's Eliza, I think, who only sings. She beatboxes once. Okay. But yeah. yeah. So what other political or historical figures need a uh, Hip hop musical written about them. John oh. Smith. Yeah. Maybe not hip hop. I don't know. You think so? I just think. I think somebody should write a musical so about funny. Andrew Jackson because he was one of the biggest jerks that ever lived, in my estimation. And so I think it would be good. He would be such a great villain in a musical and people could really start to appreciate. I thought it was really interesting that they were talking about, you know, taking Hamilton off of the $10 yeah. bill, right? And I was like, uh -huh. why would you take Hamilton, the founder of the treasury, off the $10 bill? Why wouldn't you take Andrew Jackson, who, you know, killed thousands of people exactly. off of the $20 bill? It makes no sense to me. Mm -hmm. But then his the, the musical Hamilton actually saved Hamilton and kept him on the $10 mm. bill. And now they're thinking of taking actually taking Andrew Jackson off, right? Yeah, or they're going to do like a flip side thing. Mm. I don't know what the decision why was made on that. Why do we have to keep Andrew Jackson? We don't. Why? We should just get rid of him. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. You're out. But what about Marie Antoinette? A hip hop musical. And a oh. hip hop musical? Yeah. Not on money. Why would I put her on her money? <laughs> I wasn't tracking you at all, Holly. <laughs> Sorry. I just I really wanted to bring that up. Like, just let them eat cake. But in a so, rap. what's your favorite Hamilton song? Oh, it depends on the day. Yeah, isn't the, that the amazing? There's so many songs. Yeah. My sister actually, she went to governor's school and they had only played Alexander Hamilton and then the room where it happened. Yeah. And I had picked her up and she was like, I hate <coughs> Hamilton. It was like a two hour drive home and I'm like, no, you can't say that you hate Hamilton when you've only heard two songs. I had her listen to probably from blow us all away to yeah. the end. And I was yeah. like, you better be crying. This is so sad. So we yeah. sat in the car and cried <laughs> to the last <laughs> few songs. My favorite song is right now is nonstop. I listen to that before exams. But my time. That and my shot. Yeah, that's a good one. Those are both like. Wait for it was my first favorite oh. song in Hamilton. And then I got into the cabinet battles. I think Skylar Sis Sisters was the very first one I listened to. Yeah. Which Skylar, Skylar sister, sister are you? My sister and I have decided that I'm Angelica and she's Eliza, but just because of like the age, age. thing, and neither of us want to be Peggy, but I'm probably, <laughs> I'm, probably Peggy. Peggy. <laughs> I'm probably Peggy. I'm probably Peggy. 
Which one? I think Angelica. I think she has a real sense of honor mm -hmm. about her, and I'm very much like if I think something is right or wrong, I won't waver. Like I'm very much do the right thing, mm -hmm. or if it's the wrong thing, you you absolutely don't do it. And I think that's the way Angelica is. I would really like to read some of the letters between that Hamilton and Angelica wrote each other when she was in yeah. overseas. I haven't seen any of those, but I haven't looked for them either. I'm sure they exist. That relationship was a little weird. Yeah, it's interesting. He had like a flirtationship with Eliza's sister. I love that you, you, you just use the word <laughs> flirtationship because I do that with words that end in shun. I don't think that's a word. No, it totally <laughs> is. We make up words all the time, like is that something you can do because your English major is it's That's allowed? That's just my poetic license. So I can license. make up places. Yeah. yeah. Back to Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why in the world would Alexander Hamilton think that writing the Reynolds pamphlet, admitting to an affair of which no one had accused him, yeah. was it in any way, shape, or form a good idea? I don't think he ran that one by his wife. Do you? No. No. I don't think so at all. So I think it was really that sense of honor, and that's what I really, I don't want to get into politics in the United States right now, but um, that's what I feel sad about in terms of politics in the United States is, mm -hmm. you know, in, I think it's because in grade school you get taught about our founding fathers and how honorable they are, and George Washington will not chop down a cherry tree. I mean, I know a lot mm -hmm. of this is myth, right? And it's constructed for us to feel excited about who we are and where yeah. we're from. Mm -hmm. But I think think there was a sense of honor in a lot of people. When you're building a country from the ground up, it, they all had to stick their necks out a lot. And I think they had to make a lot of decisions that weren't easy mm -hmm. and that they tried to make honorable decisions. Not just our politicians, but people in general take so much for granted and we're not necessarily as gritty as, as Hamilton was. I mean, think of what he went through in his lifetime. And a lot of us aren't necessarily to go, go out on a limb and write 51 Federalist Papers and to try and save the Constitution, you know, it, that's a level of commitment and honor that I don't know that we necessarily see in our in our politicians anymore. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's a difference between a statesman and a politician, a, excuse the gender of statesmen, I mean all people, but that sense of um, true duty to build something, to build a just society, to build a good political system, I think that is not really anything we see in our politics mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Going off of that, I think that um, capitalism is a big part of that, even though it was yeah. such a big part of like the like the foundation of America. Yeah. I think it's been twisted into something that's really negative nowadays, especially in the current situation. Well, and back then, if you think of how many things had a value on them, it was a lot fewer. There were still things you could buy, sell, and trade, that, but th when you read the U.S. Constitution, it's and Dr. Schaff and Dr. Blanchard, I'm sure, would have insights, but a lot of it is about land ownership. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you look at George Washington and you go to his farm in Virginia, or you go to Jefferson's Farm in Monticello, Virginia, they were big landowners and, and big slave owners. And if you look at the Constitution, that was about as, that was about as wealthy as you got. But mm -hmm. now it's, you know, now things are created off of ideas mm -hmm. and off of technology and off of drugs and medicines that may or may not actually help people. And there's so many more things that are bought, sold, and traded, I think, you're right that there's there's good capitalists out there yeah. I call it this is my personal philosophy this is not based on economics but there's good capitalists and then there's capitalists run amok amok mm -hmm. where it's just like make as much profit as you possibly can I mean mm -hmm. Aberdeen's really lucky mm -hmm. to have some businesses that donate so much to our university mm -hmm. and to our community to build things like the Y and, and the new library and the new library and the um Aquatic Center and the yeah. YDC and the new Boys and Girls Club. There's a lot of generous people in this town. I think it's easier to see good capitalists in a local place. Yeah. That when you think globally, it's harder to see. Yeah. Or even in a big city where, like, communities are really not a community. Yeah. It's a, it's a community built of individuals instead of individuals building a community where you have like what you have in Aberdeen. So. And I think one of our responsibilities, if you want to talk about our responsibilities as citizens, our community responsibility in Aberdeen, not that you want to get into this, is to um, frequent our local shops. Yeah. You know, because these are the people that are giving to all of these things in town. And if 
or buying stuff on um, Zappos instead of going to Shoe Science or buying jeans on whatever website instead of going to Charisma, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot as a community because we're not supporting these organizations, these businesses mm -hmm. that do so much to support us. Yeah. So I think that sense of community that we have, we're lucky to have, but I also think there's a responsibility to foster it and mm -hmm. our responsibility is as consumers to support our local businesses.